Hello everybody and welcome to your next C-Sharp and XNA Made Easy tutorial. Last tutorial was really long so I'm going to make this one short, sweet and spicy. So it is generally the same It's code as the last, um, the program that I uploaded yesterday. Um, the only difference is that we have a texture now. And in this program, now we're going to be loading our own custom cursors in case you don't like the default Windows um, cursor that comes with your computer. So, what we do is that we're going to, um, wait, let me show you the resulting program at the end. So, what I have is that my custom, this is my custom cursor, it's a picture of a pencil, and it does the same functions. When you highlight over and you click it, it shows the word when you click off of it the word disappears so um, what I'm doing is loading my my cursor my cursor image um, so I'm going to be loading this image right here so I named the pencil and I'm loading this image if you double click it you'll see it or see your images in X and A so anyways um, I have my texture now it's uh, this is still my lazy coding. I should really move this to initialize. I'll do it for next tutorial. Anyways, so now let's go to the initialize. Now set your mouse to invisible to equal to false. We don't want to show the mouse on the screen. We want to show our actual cursor. And we're going to give it the illusion that it's the actual mouse on the screen. So what we want to do is load our texture. And we're going to be loading the pencil texture. And I have two pencil and pencil magenta. I'll explain why I have those later. So now let's go to the update method. Um, did I change anything to update? No, I did not. So basically, it's all we have to change is the load content to load our 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 image. Sorry, our texture. And then at the bottom, before Sprite Bash end, we want to actually draw our cursor to the screen. The reason being is that we want our cursor to be above everything in the game, in the game window. If it's below other objects and stuff, then you won't be able to actually see the cursor. So you have to draw the cursor last, so it will overlap everything that you have previously drawn. So what we do is that we do Sprite Bash at draw. We're gonna draw our cursor image. Now we create a new vector two, and we're gonna set it to the mouse's current x position and the mouse's current y position. So we're setting the cursor based on our mouse position on the screen, and color white is just to set it to the default color of our image. And when we run this program, this is what we get: our texture image. When we move around, it shows our image instead of our cursor. So, um, one thing to state is that this image is on um, 32 by 32 pixels. Um, it's always good if it's a power of two. Um, if the image is like, like, it is it's always good if the image can be a power of two, right? Because if it is a power of two, then the computer renders it and deals with it much better. So it's up to you if you want to make it a different size, but I tried to squeeze it into 32 by 32 to make it run better. You won't see any significant performance changes because these are fairly small programs. But in larger programs, you want to um, make it as um, friendly as possible. Since uh, C Sharp isn't as low level as C++, and it handles a lot of the lower level stuff for you, you really want to make all the the all the and performance enhancement stuff that you can in fact do you want to do them so it's just a good habit to get into now um if you notice um my pencil image uh this k okay, this pencil image right now okay right here it's a png image and if i was to use the magic tool in paint.net and I was to delete the background, I could have a transparent background. And uh, as you've learned, I think, I'm not sure if I taught this in loading sprites and stuff, but when you have a transparent background and load it with a PNG file, then it will remain transparent in your actual program. But say this image wasn't transparent, right? 
uh, say it wasn't a PNG file, say it was a bitmap file, and you were just too lazy to convert it, right? And what one good thing is that maybe you wanted a certain area or a certain color to be transparent. So the in most um game libraries, the default transparent color is magenta, which is 255 red intensity, zero green intensity, and 255 blue intensity on the RGB color scale. Now I'm not sure about what it is in hex, but you can search that up on Google. Um, so that's normally the default color because magenta is a really ugly color that is not widely seen in a lot of video games. So this is why that's mainly the default um, transparent color. I know for an Allegro 4 and stuff that the default um, transparent color is indeed magenta because that's just not widely used. But with XNA, we have the luxuries of changing the actual transparent color that we want to display on the, sh uh, like which images, which part of the images we want to be transparent. So what we do is that we right click on, oh, let me close this, uh, right click on your image, so I right click on pencil magenta, click properties. Now you get the properties window right here. Beside content processor, you'll see an arrow. You click the arrow, and what you'll see is color key co uh, color key color, and this is that you want to set the transparent color to. So we're basically saying that the transparent color is 255 red, zero green intensity, 250 blue, and an alpha value of 255. And I'll get more into alpha in subsequent tutorials. And so just to see if the color key is enabled and all these other options that you can select. I won't get right into in depth about these right now. Uh, these will be for um, other future tutorials. And you can press it down just to have it from a different view if you like. But that's just up to you. So um, we said it that the transparent color is equal to magenta in the content processor it's set to that by default but you can change it to whatever color so say you wanted the transparent color in your image to be white then you could say um, that the transparent color is two, 255 red, 255 blue and 255 green intensity and 255 alpha and that would indeed make your white color transparent now so then it doesn't matter which image I use if I use pencil magenta then it will still um, provide the same image as it did before. So you can see this pencil is still there because it removed the magenta background. So that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.